In today's episode, Alex and I do a deep dive and let you know everything that you would need to know about creatine supplementation. And don't forget, only 10% of you guys that regularly watch our channel are subscribed. So if you're part of that other 90%, we would love for you to hit that subscribe button. Don't forget to share this with a friend, and we'll catch you on the inside. What is something that makes you very excited to wake up in the morning? Is it during the week or during the weekend? Let's go during the week. I am excited to dig into work on a majority daily basis. If I'm behind on stuff, of course, no one's looking forward to getting into work. But um, I look forward to work 90 plus percent of the days. What about you? I was going to say that I look forward to hash browns and bacon every morning. (laughs) Well, I look forward to breakfast too. I get excited. I look forward to my coffee. Every time I go to sleep, I get excited of, ooh, I get hash browns and bacon in the morning. I think I get really excited just for the day in general when I'm scheduling my day the night before and looking through of like what's on my calendar and what time am I going to get to train, uh, how much speed do I need to move with for the day? Mm -hmm. Uh, How much efficiency do I have to have? And and where can I find pockets of time for myself? I get excited, like just writing my schedule in the evening. It's interesting because I I used to think, okay, if I just pre-plan my week for the whole week, then I'm set. But I do now, I'm at the point that I have to review my day and look at the plan for the next day, make sure everything's set before I close my computer. And sometimes that overwhelm does creep in, but more often than not, it's just, okay, I have these things to get done and I'm excited to get after those and check them off. There's one thing that's in my daily routine that we're going to talk about today. Oh, do tell. Yes. And it is a supplement and that supplement is creatine. Wow. That is a very generous supplement I've heard. Generous? It's very generous. How so? They just let you borrow a phosphate to just let you keep having that energy so you can train harder, you can recover faster, and you can just get after it. Okay, we're getting right into it. (laughs) Today's topic is a deep dive into creatine, what it is, when you should take it, what type you should take, all the things. And so I think that we should get started with what is creatine. As Sue was explaining, it is going to be a energy source for your muscles to be able to function through the first 10 seconds of physical activity. Think about in a sprint or in a um, barbell back squat. It's going to aid in your energy output, your strength and power uh, to work through that and to get into even more of the, the weeds that Sue is speaking on is that when we look at our energy sources, we have ATP. And when that energy is utilized, it becomes ADP. It loses a phosphate. And what creatine is going to do is going to take that ADP and say, yo, bro, I've got you and give it another phosphate to allow for that energy to be reused, where in a normal setting without creatine levels being present, we will run into a situation where once that ATP is turned into into ADP, it is no longer useful and will be excreted through waste. And so it allows for us as kind of a recycling system to have even greater energy. And we see through research to have a lot of benefit. I remember the first time I heard you explain it that way, and it just clicked of why wouldn't I use this supplement? Why wouldn't I get that little bit of edge, especially because I was already consistent with a lot of other aspects of my fitness journey? It felt like, hey, I'm ready to have something else in my routine that I'm consistent with, and I do want that edge. I do want that step up. If I can train a little harder or recover a little better, I'm going to take that. Creatine is one of the most researched supplements that we have in the industry. As I was collecting the data for this podcast, I found over a thousand studies and meta-analysis that were digging into the efficacy and the safety of creatine. And I think that with that much literature behind a supplement and a lot of benefits being shown, the safety and the efficacy are a 100% 
hard yes that you are good to take it. And on top of that, creatine is also produced by the body, and it's in a lot of food sources that you likely already eat, like eggs and meat. And so I feel even safer taking it of just knowing my body already produces this. I'm helping it out because my body might not be able to produce the amount that I need to get this type of benefit. And so then I'm just able to go ahead, add that into my day and feel really good about it. That's a really good point that you bring up that we naturally produce creatine. And that may raise the question of why supplement with it if I can get it through my food or if I can naturally produce it. And what research has shown is that we can increase our creatine stores by 30% by supplementing with creatine. And with the benefits that we're about to dig into, that 30% is going to make a significant difference because as we look at the benefits, we're going to have improvements in recovery time. We're going to have improvements in strength and power output, as well as having some cognitive benefit with short-term memory, as well as ability to perform through testing and overall intelligence and reasoning. I feel like with these claims that we hear from research, it can kind of be like, oh my gosh, is this a magic product or what is this really going to change if I am taking it? And I think one thing I always like to mention is consistency is going to be the major determinant if you are going to experience some of these factors that Alex just listed off. But past that, did you find any other or more specific aspects of this in the research that you were looking or anecdotally from clients? or yourself. I did stumble upon a meta-analysis that was comparing the benefits experienced by trained and non-trained lifters when taking creatine. And the trained lifters saw an increase of 8% in their overall strength and 14% in the increase in repetitions that they were performing in the exercises that were tested in the research. The untrained individuals experienced even greater gains of 30% increase in their overall strength and repetitions being performed. So to give you an example on that, you could go from squatting 135 as a beginner. If if you started out at 135 as a beginner, something pretty impressive. You're awesome. Um, You could go from squatting 135 to squatting 175. I mean, that's a significant improvement in just being consistent with one supplement. I know within our clients, we've definitely had clients that have started creatine supplementation and seen the scale go up and some that are scared to take creatine because they don't want to see the scale go up. So what is the reasoning behind the scale going up with creatine and is that fat gain? What's happening when the creatine is being absorbed into the muscle or into the cell is that when it is being pulled in, it is moving in to the muscle with a water molecule. So by having that hydration that's going into the cell, you're going to see your scale weight slowly increase while the creatine levels are beginning to saturate. Once those levels are saturated, at that point, you will not continue to just see your scale weight go up and up. Um, But that will be the initial portion of things as you're utilizing it. You will see a small trend of one to three pounds over the first maybe three weeks of the weight going up. So just being cognizant of that, if you are starting to utilize creatine um, when looking at your scale readings on a day-to-day basis. Scale weight can be such a tricky thing. And thankfully, from the experience of working with you and you having the coach's eye that you've allowed me to really see when the scale changes, it doesn't always mean that it's a bad thing or a good thing. Going down doesn't mean that it's good and going up doesn't mean that it's bad. And it's really important to take a look at the full picture and to look at context and look at your progress pictures and see, hey, maybe the scale weight went up a little bit, but maybe my muscles look a little bit fuller or I do look a little bit more jacked. Uh, And I know within the Leaner Together series that we've been doing over on YouTube, it's been extremely helpful for people to see you going through check-ins. So I would recommend if you do feel like you get in your head when it comes to the scale and you really want to learn how to look at those pictures and be more objective to take a look at that series because it's been incredible to read the comments of how many people are learning through that because it has been such a personally positive experience being able to learn through that become so much more objective with the scale and be able to notice an increase like this isn't bad. 
another thing to drive home is that a muscle belly is 70% water. And so that small change with creatine being added in and that water molecule also being pulled in is going to help with the function of the muscle tissue. It's going to help with the appearance of the muscle tissue. And so being cognizant of that and not being so worried about water. It's like, oh my gosh, I have, there's water in my body. I have to get it out. I have to be dry. I have to, it's like, no, no, no. We need that for the muscle to function properly. And logically by having the, the creatine in place, it's only going to allow for the muscle contractions and, uh, for it to, uh, have better absorption and excrete metabolic waste and all these different things by being more hydrated. Logically, it makes sense that, um, it's going to function better. And so keeping those things in mind, Mind and understanding those factors when you're seeing uh, scale changes, or maybe you had a day where you were a little bit more dehydrated and found yourself in a situation where your scale weight was down. It's like, okay, I'm going to stop drinking water. It's like, well, that's not it either. So being cognizant of those hydration levels um, is going to be important. And does anyone have enough creatine in their body naturally to have these results? Or does someone always have to supplement with creatine to get these results? There was one paper that I had come across that showcased that 20 to 30% of individuals um, already have fully saturated creatine levels. So you may be part of that 20 to 30%. I would just err on the side that you're not part of that 20 to 30% and supplement with creatine to reap the benefits because I feel as though that majority of the people that are going to say they're in that 20 to 30% are using it as a cop out because they're enable to just be consistent with the supplement itself and they are using it as a cop out to not take it on a regular basis. Are you wanting to hire the last coach you will ever need? Well, look no further. Physique Development is here to help you. We have a huge emphasis on knowledge and communication and making sure you know how to get yourself in the best position so you never have to hire another coach again. If this sounds great to you, then go ahead and fill out the inquiry link in the show notes or the description box, and we would love to get on a call with you. Another thing that gets really confusing for people, especially when it comes to supplements, is that you might search creatine or you might even go to a supplement store and ask if they have any creatine and then there's like a whole wall or multiple pages and maybe they all just say creatine on them or they start throwing in different names around the word creatine so what do these types mean what different types are there how do I even know which one is the best one to take is there a best one like so many things go through my head in those instances there are many different types of creatine that have hit the market, and we're going to get into some literature that looked at eight different types, but there are going to be three specific types that you're going to more commonly see. And the first one is going to be creatine monohydrate. This is the most simple form of creatine. Then you have buffered creatine, which is going to be crealkaline that you may see at your local V shop or GNC. <laughs> and then you have creatine HCL, which is going to be if I was to recommend another one outside of the one that I do recommend, which we'll get into in a moment, <laughs> this would be kind of my second option for specific groups that may deal with some GI distress that may come with creatine monohydrate supplementation. That's interesting to hear that they did a study on eight different types. So what did they find? That all eight types increased creatine muscle levels. So <laughs> they all worked. Perfect. And the from there, since they all are doing the job that we are desiring them to do, then it becomes something about price. And in this particular study that was done, I think maybe the, the exact date is escaping me, but it's been maybe a year or longer since the study was done. And what they found, price per serving of five grams, the buffered creatine was about $1.51 and then the creatine monohydrate was 19 cents. So you're going to save quite a bit of money just going with creatine monohydrate relative to the fancier form of buffered creatine um, and being able to save that money and still get all the gains that you're looking for when supplementing with creatine. 
Does that mean that creatine monohydrate is your number one most suggested creatine? Yes, I would say that creatine monohydrate is my number one answer. Um, the other forms, I think, just stick around so that companies can try to separate themselves in a market that everyone is carrying a creatine product and they want to be the best one. Thus, they have these different claims for the different types of creatine having greater strength or, or power output or whatever the situation is. But when we look at the literature, creatine monohydrate is going to be the best form and be the best on your wallet as well. In the prior study, you talked about the cost per serving with a five gram serving. So is that what dosage we want to use when we are supplementing with creatine monohydrate? Creatine dosage has been looked at extensively, anywhere between one gram to 10 grams to, I believe, even further than that dosage per day. And so we have quite a bit of literature to support a quality dosage to get the benefit that we desire. Now, there has been some research done on female swimmers that was a on the lower side. I think it was one to two grams daily for six months, and that did not reap the benefit that we were desiring within overall performance, body composition and so on. There was another study that was done over a six-week period comparing three grams per day and five grams per day. And what they found within that study was that the benefits were about the same for the group that was three grams and that was five grams. And so with that being the case, there was another study. <laughs> I was all in these papers. I was, there was so, much, so many papers. So three to five grams, thumbs up. A later paper that I had found was able to create a uh, kind of a, a line in which you want to follow of 0 0.03 grams per kilogram of body mass per day to reap the benefit in which we're speaking to today. And so if we wanted to give it an example here, a 150 pound individual would need a little over two grams per day. Now, if you wanted to, you could put your weight into that uh, equation, if you will, and find the exact dosage that is going to give you the benefit. If you just want to <laughs> not worry about it, I would say that five grams is going to be perfectly fine for almost everyone. If you were a larger male and you were 250 pounds and above, I would say, maybe a little bit more than five grams. But for the average individual, I would say three to five grams is a good window. Most companies are going to sell it in five gram scoops. So I would just go ahead and take the five grams and understand that you're definitely getting the benefits that you're seeking when taking the supplement. I mentioned consistency within taking a supplement to truly reap the benefits, but creatine also has another aspect of saturation. To really reap the benefits, you're not going to take it once and already start to see it. You do need to saturate the muscle, and since it does need to stay saturated, that's another aspect that consistency comes into play. So you can do a loading phase, but honestly, I don't like to get into the weeds with myself or with my clients for something like this because you can end up having pretty bad GI distress because of the amount that you're having to take, which would be around 20 grams per day. And that just is not worth it to me. Whereas if I just go ahead and stick with the five grams per day, I'm gonna reach that saturation in three weeks. So one week versus three weeks in the grand scheme of it all, and something that I can just stay consistent with five grams, that's what I'm personally gonna go with. So when it comes to those loading phases, you can do them, of course, but do you need to do them? Absolutely not. Just start with that five grams, keep taking that five grams, and you should be on your way. A common question we get with creatine supplementation is that does it have to be the powdered form or can I take it in capsules? And if you are desiring to take it in capsules, more power to you, but getting enough capsules that five grams of powder is going to fit, it's going to be quite a few capsules mm -hmm. or really big capsules in general. So I would lend towards having that powdered form. Now, if you feel as though that when you try and mix up your creatine, it just stays very powdery and doesn't mix up well, try mixing it with with hot water, 
it doesn't have to be scalding hot. Like you're not <laughs> boiling the water and then For putting tea. it. Yeah, you're not you're not making tea. Just warm water, I'll say, and that will help with the breakdown of creatine, which is also going to help those individuals who may experience some of that GI distress that we've talked about intermittently throughout this podcast. So if you do experience the GI distress, going with the warm or hot water and mixing your creatine in there is also going to be helpful for that. It is summertime and with summer comes vacations and needing to look like a smoke show at the beach. And that is probably you and wanting to get in the best shape of your life. With Physique Development, our one-on-one coaching is going to do that for you. So head over to physiquedevelopment.com and inquire to work with one of our coaches. There are, of course, certain supplements that you do have to be more time-specific with to really reap the benefits. We've mentioned things like Yohimbine and making sure you're taking that in a fasted state. So when it comes to creatine, do you have to take it at a specific time or is it just whenever as long as you get it in? There is some research supporting better utilization or absorption post-workout relative to taking it pre-workout or any other time throughout the day. But I like to go with the thought process of just take it when you're going to be consistent with it. Take it every single day at the same time so it just becomes part of your routine because it's a supplement that you're just going to take on a daily basis for the foreseeable future. It's not a supplement that you're going to take um, for eight weeks and then cycle off and cycle back on. And and I guess we can answer that question now (laughs) of should you cycle on and off of creatine? No, I do not think that it's necessary. We want to keep those levels saturated. There is some research that is going to speak to uh, by supplementing for long periods of time, your natural uh, levels of creatine are going to diminish. I would say that there's limited research on that topic. If it begins to expand, there may be more validity to cycling on and off. But at this moment, I do not think that it's a necessary uh, component of of creatine supplementation. I know we joke sometimes that I'm a rule follower. And so if something is said, okay, you have to take this post-workout, then I feel very attached to I have to do it at that time. But it has been so helpful for me, especially for aspects like creatine, where really the consistency matters way more than, okay, did I take it specifically post-workout or not? is being able to see how fitness applies to my life and how I can make it consistent. Where if I can't get into the gym for uh, 90 minutes a day, then I'm not going to go and do 90 minute sessions or sessions that are gonna take 90 minutes because I'm gonna feel so defeated. I'm going to feel frazzled while I'm going through the session of trying to squeeze something into a time frame I don't have. And then when I don't accomplish the 90 minutes, I'm going to be down on myself for not doing doing what I I said I was going to do. Whereas if I just put it in of, hey, I can just do 45 minute sessions and that's what I have and I make it that way, I'm going to do so much better, be so much more consistent and feel better because I can stay consistent. And that applies exactly to this of, hey, just take it when you can. But uh, for me, having a routine to it does help. So just knowing, hey, I'm going to take it. And I actually take it with my pre-workout because that's the easiest way for me to remember. That's the main drink I'm having that I am putting in different powders and it's in the same drawer. So it's just so much easier for me to have it pre slash intro workout if I am having an intro workout shake. Optimal in research does not mean optimal for you. As much as we would love to just fit the mold of all research so that uh, we have answers, it's just not always the case. And so we have to look at it from more of a lens of what is going to be best for you personally. And so for you, taking it pre-workout works out nicely. Now, there is some research, (laughs) I'm gonna come back to this. Uh, There is some research that taking creatine with caffeine is going to hinder some of the absorption components. Eric Trexler has done some great research on this topic and trying to get to the bottom of why this is the case. Um, He's still working on that. But uh, if you are taking a pre-workout that is higher caffeine consumption, let's say 250 milligrams or above, and is also uh, having your 
creatine uh, supplementation in that product or you're adding it in and you're experiencing some of that GI distress, that very well may be the case. And so just being cognizant of that if you're experiencing any of those issues. Thankfully, Legion has stem-free pulse. <laughs> they do. And I will say for uh, another plug for Legion would be Legion Recharge, which with creatine supplements, I feel like the biggest deterrent for people is the flavor. Mm -hmm. They just, they don't like the... Um, like how the, the powder sits in their mouth. Mm -hmm. There's a better way of saying that, but <laughs> they don't like how it feels in their mouth. And then it, it sometimes does not uh, mix very well. And so what Legion does is that with their recharge product, they have some really great flavors. I love the, is it strawberry lemonade? Mm -hmm. The strawberry lemonade, like over iced water is so, so good. good and so refreshing, especially in the summer mm -hmm. um, when it's scorching hot outside. I love coming home from the gym and being able to just open up the fridge with that already prepared and it's ice cold. It is so refreshing. So if you want to have one that is post-workout, I think Legion Recharge is the best product. It's great because they also have an unflavored one. So if I know that, hey, I'm not going to end up drinking this post-workout, then I can just throw the unflavored one in with my pre-workout and be set to go. But if it's an instance where maybe I just, I forgot it or whatever may happen, or it's a, a rest day, then I can go ahead and throw it in. And I remember vividly when we first got married of like, we were in a peanut butter and jelly phase and we would have peanut butter and jelly with those like Quest protein chips. And then we would have the Legion strawberry lemonade recharge and we'd have them in our mason jars and we would get so excited to drink them and just have that change in flavor too instead of having water constantly. What a throwback. That takes us back to our <laughs> first year of marriage and uh, at the apartment. I know. Yeah. I just like that memory just unlocked as we were talking. It's so funny to go on a side tangent here to think back to that time where we thought we were so busy and had so much going <laughs> on. And no. I will say five years later now that we had nothing going on. Yes. We had plenty of time on our hands oh. and we were in our own way big time. Mm -hmm. Like we were making so many obstacles out of nothing uh, in that stage of our life just to essentially say that we were stressed and busy. Yeah. And I, I, I would love to go back to that time to have that much free time of, I mean, for lunch, we would take a two hour break basically. But also we didn't know the benefit of taking breaks at that time. That's and true. so we didn't take breaks. So we were so much less productive. So we did have to work that long to accomplish a certain amount of tasks. So we did not use our time wisely, did not take breaks. And when we did take breaks, they were like two or three hour lunch breaks to just sit there. <laughs> That's very true. And yeah, I don't know, efficiency and systems and all that stuff were just not in place. So yeah. we were we were functioning on a, a very low level yeah. relative to what we are now. We're sharing in office, which I would never, ever, ever go back to in my whole entire life. With how much we record and we're on the phone and on Loom recordings and all that, that would, it's, it would be impossible. Yeah. And we, we both thrive in much different environments as far as work or need different focuses. Even just being in traveling this past weekend and working in a hotel room, it was just like, this is not it for us to work in the same space. What Sue is referring to is that she likes to work in complete silence and complete silence is the most distracting thing in the world to me. I have to have like some noise going on or headphones or I need to be singing. Like something needs to be happening as I'm working or I just get very, very overwhelmed and stressed. Like I, I, I cannot focus when it's dead silent and that's exactly what you want and it freaks me out. And if I'm in the room, you just want to talk to me the whole what? time. That That is not a me <laughs> thing. That is a us thing. Even if it's like you're doing a check-in, you'll just talk out loud to me or just Whatever. move over to another conversation. <laughs> All right. I got some questions for you to finish this off to learn a little bit more about creatine. So should you take it when you are in a cut? Yes. Should you take it when you're at maintenance? Yes. Should you take it when you're in a bulk? Yes. Should you take it all the time? You should. Who will benefit the most from taking creatine? Everyone will benefit unless you fall into that 20 to 30% that we talked about earlier that has already just the god tier level of <laughs> creatine saturation uh, naturally. But vegans and vegetarians will benefit the most because of their protein sources. We talked about the meats and the creatine levels that are naturally going to be in those food sources. With them not consuming those, those protein sources, it will be 
of greater importance for them to supplement with creatine. Should women take it? Yes. Interesting. Women should do a lot of the same things that men should do when it comes to fitness and supplements. For the most part, yeah. Will it make you bloated? No. All right. Should I take it on rest days? You should. Should I take it during peak week or even on show day? Very much so. As we talked about, the muscle belly being 70% water, creatine is going to help pull your nutrients and water into the muscle cell. It's not going to make you look watery. It's going to actually make you look better. It's going to increase the size of the tissue and those different factors. So during peak week, during show day, it is a huge help. But what if I miss a day? Take it the next day. Those were all of the frequently asked questions that we see a lot. So if you have a question that has not been answered, then leave it down below if you're watching this on YouTube. If you're listening on one of your favorite podcast platforms, then you can go ahead and shoot us a DM on Instagram so we can get you that answer. But Alex, do you have anything else for today? I don't believe so. I think that creatine, as we've talked about through this whole episode and through all the literature is shown to be helpful for everyone. And this is a product that I recommend my, my parents take, especially for the cognitive benefits that we didn't touch on a whole lot, but there is going to be a, a portion of creatine that is stored in the brain. And we talked about some of those benefits earlier in the episode. So my, my dad's 63 years old. I encourage him to take this every day to help with that brain to continue to be useful. <laughs> if you guys have not already, make sure that you are subscribed to the channel. Make sure that you like this video if you're watching on YouTube. If you're listening on your favorite listening platform, please leave us a review. Tell us how we've done. We appreciate you and we'll see you in the next episode.